cricket, lovely cricket. At last where I saw it. Let's have a look at the commentators. They arrived at Lord's and I went into the box and there was E.W. Swanton, Brian Johnston, John Arlott, Jack Fingleton, the irascible Australian, former opening batsman, great man, Blyfeld, why don't you take those marbles out of your mouth? That's how he always used to greet me. But the only time I commentated with Alan Gibson, who was as good a commentator, I thought, as John Arlott. Uh, but like John Arlott, he had a fairly insatiable thirst. Unlike John Arlott, he didn't quite know when to stop. Yes. And he get out of the wine list. Arlott looked at him and said, he said, we have five of the red and three of the white. And the uh, waiter, who didn't know who he was talking to, the wine waiter said, uh, uh, glasses, uh, glasses, you stupid man. Bottles, of course. And Michael Duke Hastings, who was still the producer then, rather strange choice, because he hated cricket. But there, there we are, that's the way these things happen at the BBC. And Although John is himself, with that enormous nose and those bushy eyebrows, was not actually a, a ladies' man, really. Uh, he had a, an enormous number of, of lady followers, which was splendid. He was the only person I've ever known who could pick up the lobe of his ear, tuck it into the rest of it, and just leave it, and it would stay there. And a lady wrote to him saying, you know, you really must be more careful. Do you know the other day you said the bowler's holding the batsman's willy? Now, it wasn't Arlo, as we called him, who first saw him. It was Trevor Bailey who was summarising with him. Now, Trevor knew there was a word for people who did things like this. He couldn't quite get it. And he thought he started, he said, ah, and then he stopped. And there was an almost embarrassing pause. And then he said again, ah, a freaker. And Arlo was happy to run with that. Yes, he said, we've got a freaker. Not very shapely. And it's masculine. And it has, I think, seen the last of its cricket for the day. I think if Chris had a fault, it was his timing. Not his timing as a commentator, but his timing as a man. He was late for always over, for everything. And uh, when he was alive, he was always known as the late Christopher Martin Jenkins. Tony Cozio from Barbados. He was a wonderful host in Barbados. And uh, the lovely parties he had in the old days when Test matches had rest days. And we always went to the beach house that he shared with Richard Edwards, the uh, Prof Edwards, as he was known. Uh, the former West Indian fast bowler, the legendary rum parties we had there, I can tell you what, very difficult to see any ball bowl at all on the last two days. Uh, you then got another overseas commentator, Alan McGilvery, very clipped, very Australian, very precise, a man who wouldn't know what a sense of humour was. If you put a sense of humour on a silver salver with watercress around it, he still wouldn't have had a clue what it was. Don Mosey, another one I've not mentioned, known as the Alderman by um, Brian Johnston. Brian first met him and thought he looked exactly like an Alderman. And so always called him the Alderman. The Alderman was... Um, uh, a good commentator. He always he he always thought that um, the, the the TMS box was a sort of a, a nest of public schoolboys, which he rather objected to. And he once wrote a splendid book called The Best Job in the World, in which he spent two hundred and forty nine pages saying what a lot of what a bloody awful lot we were. No, he said the first three or four, and then you may call me Prince. And we called him Prince, and everyone thought we had a dog in the box. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll keep you posted, but first I want to tell you, greedy lovers, uh, that this Jackson's a fast bowler, and the reason I know he's a fast bowler is that he's got four short legs and his balls swing both ways. I suppose everyone I've ever commentated with has had some sort of influence on me, in that one has listened to them and all the rest. But I think eventually you find your own level and your own way of commentating, and it's desperately important to be yourself. If you are trying to be someone else, it becomes contrived and beastly. And I remember very much saying this to Jonathan Agnew, before he did his first test match for the BBC at Headingley in 91, he suddenly said to me, Blurs, what's the secret of this? And I said, look, be yourself. And, and, and you will find that you acquire your own, your own style. It may not come at once, but it comes in time. And that is you. And there ended the first lesson. <laughs> cricket, lovely cricket. At last where I saw it. Cricket, lovely cricket, at 